welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Well, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is heading back to China for yet another visit from April the 4th to April the 9th. This is her second trip to China in less than a year. Her last visit, as you may remember, was quite, should we say, interesting and perhaps the highlight of it, besides the questionable menu choices that Janet Yellen made, was this clip that has since been labeled one of the biggest diplomatic faux pas of our time. Although arguably that was not quite as bad as calling Xi Jinping a dictator to his face immediately after his visit, after his historic visit to the United States in November of 2023. President, after today, would you still refer to President Xi as a dictator? This is a term uh, that you used earlier this year. Oh, well, he is. I mean, he's a dictator in the sense that he, he is a guy who runs a country that is a communist country that is based on the government totally different than ours. In any case, Yellen is back in China. She is expected to hold multiple meetings focusing on excess factory capacity that the United States very much disapproves of because China is producing so much that due to the volume of its output, China is able to substantially increase supply and as the result of that bring prices down, which is a big no-no for the West and specifically for the United States. China is becoming more and more competitive, especially when it comes to the production of necessary and essential parts and equipment for the green energy transition. The United States does not like that and is threatened by the rising China despite its economic issues recently. The United States side says that China's manufacturing hurts American workers and, of course, allied countries' economies. Apparently, this is where the current leaders draw the line. It's not underfunding domestic infrastructure that hurts Americans and American workers. It's not mismanaging fiscal policy for years and years not even working directly with corporations to serve their best interests, to make sure that the entire system is set up in a way that hurts an average worker, but brings substantial profits to corporate shareholders for years and years. No, that doesn't worry them. But what worries them the most is China's capacity to overproduce, meaning the rising China is viewed as a considerable threat to the United States, even though the United States imports so much of Chinese products that any idea of decoupling would never work. Not in the current scenario when U.S. consumers are worse off financially than they were several years ago. The Treasury Department issued a statement on Yellen's visit, I do want to share it with you, and it stated that Yellen will advocate for American workers and businesses to ensure they are treated fairly, including by pressing Chinese counterparts on unfair trade practices and underscoring the global economic consequences of Chinese industrial overcapacity. So right now, China is focusing on manufacturing related to such industries as EVs, commercial space flight, and life sciences. China has access manufacturing capacities for solar energy production, EVs, and lithium-ion batteries, essential green energy products. Major news outlets in the United States report that Yellen's trip is very important for the United States because its outcome will determine how the economic relations between the United States and China will progress. Whether or not Janet Yellen can turn things around is questionable, of course, and it's not in China's interest to cater to other countries' needs anyway, so it would be naive to expect any conversations that do take place in China to be one-sided, they cannot be one-sided. Yellen would have to offer something really valuable in return, if she can. Prior to Yellen's trip, Biden reportedly spoke to Xi Jinping earlier this week, and it was the first one-on-one -on -one conversation since his visit to the United States back in November of last year. It was reported that they discussed China's relationships with Russia and Iran. Further details have not been released, but clearly, 
clearly after alienating all three countries, its biggest competitors, two of which are great powers, Russia, China, and Iran, and truly doing everything possible to give them reasons to unite because nothing can unite people more than a common enemy, right? Now we're seeing Yellen go back to China again, trying to influence China's trade policies, or alternatively, quite possibly ask for money, right? Yellen is going to try to convince China that the United States is not, in fact, trying to decouple. Of course, U.S. bankers and top CEOs who met with the Chinese leaders last week are not even considering decoupling. They want more profit. This is why they went to China last week. China's financial sector is worth approximately $60 trillion, so nobody is going to decouple. Excess capacity really worries the current administration, however. During a recent visit to a solar module factory, Janet Yellen commented, I am concerned about global spillovers from the excess capacity that we're seeing in China. China's overcapacity distorts global prices and production patterns and hurts American firms and workers, as well as firms and workers around the world. So Yellen is in China to convince Chinese manufacturers not to produce as much as China wants to produce, while at the same time potentially threatening with trade barriers, sanctions, and tariffs. Although she might have more of a win-win plan, we're not aware of it just yet. Maybe she will walk back the sanctions on Chinese companies. Um, I think that remains on the table, and I, I don't think it's off the table at this time. By the way, following the TikTok decision, the United States and the EU both opened probes into Chinese EV production. Specifically, the United States has been very concerned about the data that EVs might be able to transmit, although, of course, nothing has been proven yet. Janet Yellen's visit comes only a week after top U.S. CEOs met in Beijing. A group of 20 U.S. chief executive officers, including BlackRock, FedEx, Bloomberg, attended a summit in Beijing in late March. At the summit, Xi Jinping said that promoting the recovery of the world economy and solving international and regional hot issues requires both China and the United States to coordinate cooperation. Of course, you can't help but agree with that. I do look forward to seeing what results this trip brings. I think Yellen realizes that threatening China with trade barriers is only going to backfire. So she's got to have a better plan to handle this. Hopefully, we can only hope. I'll keep you updated. I appreciate your time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining. And I will see you back here tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.